Now, we have an exclusive report for you exposing a secret private army that does the bidding of Russia's Vladimir Putin. CNN has learned that the reach of this shadowy fighting force is expanding, apparently led by a Putin ally linked to the US election interference. CNN Chief International Correspondent Clarissa Ward joins me now with more. You've been looking at this for some time. That's right, Max. It's nearly a year now that we have been reporting on the increased use of mercenaries by uh, by Russia in countries across the world, many of them unstable countries. Officially, the Kremlin says we have no relationship to these groups at all. But we managed to sit down with a former fighter from one of the most notorious groups called Wagner, and he told us a very different story. This is Oleg. For years, he says he worked as a hired gun in Syria for a shadowy Russian mercenary group called Wagner that has become a valuable tool for the Kremlin. Wagner is Putin's instrument for resolving issues by force, when action has to be taken immediately, urgently, and in the most concealed way possible. I cannot say it's an army in the proper sense of that word. It's just a fighting unit that will do anything that Putin says. This is the first time a former Wagner employee has agreed to speak on camera, and Oleg asked us to disguise his identity. Private military contractors are illegal in Russia. Officially, Wagner doesn't exist. But CNN has discovered that the group now has hundreds of fighters operating on three different continents. And this is the man believed to be behind that expansion. Dubbed Putin's chef because of lucrative catering contracts with the Kremlin, Yevgeny Prigozhin is also sanctioned by the U.S. for funding the Internet Research Agency accused of meddling in the 2016 election. I'm a mercenary, and 90% of participants of the company were like me, and they were motivated by money. What sort of training was it? Where did it take place? You know, I didn't have any training as such. Not then, anyway. I spent six days in the training camp in Molkino. I went to a firing range twice and shot a machine gun once. That was it. CNN traveled to the remote Russian village of Malkino to try to get to Wagner's training camp and found that the group has a surprisingly close relationship with the Russian military. The only way to get into the Wagner barracks is to get through that checkpoint, which is manned by the Russian military, because this actually belongs to a Russian special forces unit. Not far from Malkino, there's a monument to fallen Wagner fighters. Visitors are not welcome, so we approach with a hidden camera. It looks less like a memorial than a fortress. A guard soon comes up to us. Is the church only for Wagner, I ask? I don't know for whom, he says. For the people who were in Syria, I press him. I don't know, I'm telling you, he says. I'm just guarding here. He begins to get suspicious of our questions, and we decide to leave. Yeah, he's going to call. Let's go. They didn't let us inside, uh, which is not surprising, because in that compound is the only tangible, visible proof that Wagner is real. No surprise, perhaps, that the monument is funded by a Prigozhin-owned company. It was five years ago in Crimea that mysterious unidentified fighters dubbed Little Green Men helped Moscow wrest the province from Ukraine even as the Kremlin feigned ignorance. It was a success, and Moscow's use of mercenary forces has since grown. Analysts say none of this could happen without Putin's approval. Do you think that part of the mission of Wagner is to help Russia restore its role to become a major global superpower again. Yes, 100 percent. This is the top priority for Wagner. And so it's trying to be a rival to America? Russia is trying to suppress the U.S. in every way possible, using legal and illegal means. It's trying to smash it, get the better of it somehow. What will come of it as a result? Nothing good, I think. But for Russian President Vladimir Putin, Wagner is still a worthwhile gamble, an expendable fighting force with no accountability.
Now, CNN, of course, has attempted to reach out to Yevgeny Prigozhin, whose company lawyers did not respond to us. We also wanted to contact Wagner, but because it does not officially it exists, it has no address or phone number or website. And finally, we also reached out to the Ministry of Defense for comment, but uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, Max, we did not have any response from them. They either. knew you were there because you were followed. You're used to that, but it went a bit deeper this time. Yes, yeah, so this was interesting. Part two of our series is in the Central African Republic, where Wagner has expanded significantly. And I guess there was some real concern about the type of reporting we were doing because a Russian so-called news site has released a 15-minute propaganda mm -hmm. video uh, showing that they were following us a lot of the time. There's uh, hidden camera footage of us in the hotel lobby at the airport. They have interviews with people who claim that we offered them bribes uh, to say negative things mm -hmm. about the Russians. Uh, they were in my hotel room afterwards describing a scene where I was sitting in a chair at the computer offering this man $100. And, and, you know, on the one hand, it's pretty sinister and scary stuff. But on the other hand, it tells you we really hit a nerve here with this reporting. Mm -hmm. They're obviously concerned about it. Okay. I appreciate all your work on that. Chris's team also investigating, she says, Russia's advances into the African continent, particularly in the Central African uh, Republic, where her team visited a camp run by Russian mercenaries arming and training the National Army. They traveled uh, to a Russian-controlled mine where the mission appeared less transparent. We are on our way to one of seven sites where a Russian company has been given exploration rights. One of the challenges of trying to nail down exactly what the Russians are doing here is that once you get outside the capital, this is still a very dangerous and chaotic country. And just last year, three Russian journalists were actually ambushed and killed while working on a story about Russian mercenaries. Well, watch Cl Clarissa's uh, full report on Russia's activities inside the Central African Republic on Tuesday, 6 p.m. in New York, 11 p.m. in London, only here on CNN.